So one year ago, I sold my pal Gary a 1928 Harley-Davidson JD to run in the motorcycle cannonball. After a year of preparation, Gary's finally on the road. It's day three of the competition, and we're about to find out if the motorcycle and Gary are up to the task. Today, we're hosting the world-famous Motorcycle Cannonball. Officially considered the world's most difficult antique endurance run, the Motorcycle Cannonball is a 16-day cross-country run that sees riders take vintage machines and put them up against their limits to see who comes out on top. Today is the third leg of the competition. Competition. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna see each of the 100 entrants cross the bridge at the halfway point of the toughest day of the run, 270 miles through the Blue Ridge Mountains. Now, although I don't have a motorcycle in this year's race, I got my eye on Gary. Okay, guys, my guess on the first bike in, now keep in mind, we're running 19 teens, pre-teens. I think the earliest bike I saw is 1909. Actually, somebody told me yesterday that Dave Reedy from Australia riding a 1929 Harley two cam, one of my all time favorite bikes, was the first guy in. Those two cams are fast. First Harley to go 100 miles an hour, first road model Harley. So uh, we're gonna see. My bet's on David. David Reedy on the, the two cam, 1929. My prediction was correct. What's up, buddy? Sounds nice. Cool, man. I'll catch up with you. Man, that was the best sound in two cam I heard in a long time. It didn't make any engine noise. I got some work to do. All right. Here's two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This way, right over here, guys. What's up, my man? How you doing? Everything going well? Yeah. Bike sounds good. <laughs> okay, two more in. Harley Davidson J model, and it looked like a 101 Scout. Uh, one of the Rinker boys, those guys are cannonball veterans. Not surprised to see them leading the pack. This year's event is set to take riders from Virginia Beach, Virginia to Oceanside, California. That's 3,800 miles covered over the course of 16 days of competition, traveling back roads across the country. This year's event allows bikes up to 1942, with the earliest bike in the competition going all the way back to 1909. Next bike, 1911 Harley. Oh, here's another one. Another one. It's early. Did I nail it and say it's a 1911 Harley? That's Dave Courier. Ah, oh, it's two of them. It's an Indian. <laughs> All right. What's up, my man? <laughs> Norton, looky there. That's Todd Cameron. That's the earliest bike in the run right over there. Todd Cameron on a 1909 Indian. Made all the miles, he's like the fifth guy in. Unbelievable. Hey Matt, what's Rocking, happening? Man. How, How are you doing? Running? How's your bike running? Ah, it's a little weak today. I don't know why. 1909. Know why. Yeah, 09. That's the oldest one. It's the earliest bike yeah, on the run, guys. Yeah. This is Todd Cameron yeah. all the way from uh, Southern where in Pasadena, California. California. Pasadena. Yeah. So how long have you had this bike? Uh, I bought it from Tom there and it was a basket. Okay. About, well, before the 21 race. Okay. So a year before that and then oh, all through COVID I got to build it. You did COVID a good was job a blessing because I got thing, to man. build it, man. Well, yeah. So it this, didn't make it in 21, I snapped the crank. Snapped the crank yeah. off. So this yeah. is the front runner. Yeah, right now it is, today. Unbelievable, today. We'll see man. how it goes, huh? Too cool, look, your carburetor nice and cold. Look oh, at yeah, that. like that too. Unreal. <laughs> Too cool. So what, he's just like three horsepower? Three if that, dude. Well, that's with a tailwind downhill. <laughs> so 1909 Indian guys, they were way ahead of the curve on these. They're talking at their uh, mechanical intake valve. 500 cc, right? No, it's only 27 cubic inch. 27 four, inches. 440 cc. 440 cc. But you're right, dude. The Harleys are all running belts yeah. and atmospheric valves. Yeah, chains and mechanical. Ahead was Indian, man. Way ahead. And then you get a, a Lee Spring front end. Oh, yeah. This thing probably handles ahead, great. Dude. Oh, it yeah. handles bitch. You ought to see the video, dude. We were carving up there. <laughs> Fast all the Harleys. 
Too cool, fam. I love it. So you're like the sixth bike in, maybe? Really? Yeah. So I mean, you. Yeah, guys we stopped them. a little while back and just filled up. Just cool. oh, we had to. Well, we had to take a pit stop door, first. Thanks. I love it, man. Dude, those things are getting like 60 miles to the gallon. So we maybe 120 miles. That's the further than yeah. one of those. Oh yeah, it's yeah. crazy, dude. Yeah. But I'm limited by battery. I can only get 120 on the battery too. 120 miles see, on a battery. You see my battery? Real battery? So originally this is an electronic. You know, it had a dry cell battery. That's right. No mag. So that's a moderate, whatever, my 18 volt Milwaukee drill battery. I probably shock the hell out of you, man, if you hold the plug. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's a, yeah, that's a lot of juice going oh, to yeah. that thing. Look yeah. at that spindly little case, dude. Incredible. Oh, dude, it's nothing. This thing is. What's dude, it weigh, you know? 300 pounds? No, no, I think I'm right about 200 pounds. What? Yeah, it's yeah, unbelievable. Like so here's the thing about the motorcycle cannonball. Each day, the ride covers 250 or 300 miles. And over the last 100 years, the roads have come a long way. Now this might seem like an advantage, but the reality is taking 100-year-old bikes and running them with modern traffic is no easy task. Riders have had to adapt and find ways to modify their machines to make them more durable and more capable, and also prepare for the unexpected, which on a run like the Cannonball can quickly put you out of the race. So far, the Cannonball has claimed a few bikes, and it will most certainly claim more. I'm hoping Gary won't be one of them. He's got a great crew to help him make the journey, but on this race, anything can happen. Hey, all right, man, what's happening? How are you running? Oh, I got some work. I got some belts. You got some work to do? Oh, another belt. You can put another belt on before you yeah. leave here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got on putting legging and belt. You're making too much power. I don't know. I think that I'm, I got to check, hopefully. Well, this one I flipped over about 20 miles back. Flipped over. It was downhill from that break. I got in here. I knew I could get here. Thanks for having me. Well, it's our pleasure. We've been excited about this for a long time. It's been great to see you. I knew you'd be one of the first guys in there. Well, it was a good ride this morning. It all ran really so that was the best thing. Has the route been easier or harder so far than last last time around? I think this route was easier. Yeah? yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I don't know about leaving here. I think that's a, another story. Wait till the next hill. Yeah, man. It, it, it's pretty heavy getting over the hill here. 1911 Harley. We're talking atmospheric intake valve. As primitive as primitive gets. And he just flies on that thing. A ton of R&D over the years to make it what it is. And two years ago, he won the whole event. So defending champion, got the number one plate. He's running right behind Todd Cameron, only because Todd's bike's a little bit earlier. So it's going to be interesting to see those dudes duke it out for the rest of the trip, see if they can do all the miles. So It's the old adage, Harley versus Indian. You know, we've got uh, two Indians up there and a Harley that are one, two, and three. Uh, I know they're beating back and forth. Today was probably their biggest day of fear of leaving here and actually going, you know, we're going, you know, up quick, real quick. And uh, most of these guys don't have enough horsepower, so they'll be pedaling, I'm sure, to, to get up over those hills. Wow. Headstrom Indian, probably 1913. 1913, that is a difficult bike to get across country. Cannonball Baker did it back in 1914 in like seven days or something. These guys are tough. The motorcycle Cannonball gets its name from the famous Erwin G. Baker, who was this country's original endurance competitor. Baker got his nickname after completing his first solo run across the United States in 1914 aboard an Indian motorcycle. San Diego to New York City in 11 days, 12 hours, and 10 minutes. The press caught wind of the record run and dubbed Baker Cannonball, a comparison to the Cannonball Express train made famous by Casey Jones. Baker completed 140 three cross-country runs, and during his lifetime racked up over one million competitive miles, pushing his own limits and the limits of his machines. We're proud to be part of the Motorcycle Cannonball and do our part in helping show people what these motorcycles were made for. Glad to be back here at Wheels Through Time Museum. Uh, we were here just two years ago. Uh, I think even a bigger crowd than the last time we were here. We do this because we want to see these old machines out here. It's no different than the museum, you know. We want people to come witness uh, history. Uh, you know, it, it's really cool that we get to work with places like this that, you know, you might get to see some of these things in the museum, but now you're actually getting to see them actually ride out there on the road and, and seeing what it takes to make these things go across the country. 
you know, really we just want to bring some awareness to the people out there that, hey, you can grab a, a motorcycle that's over 90 years old and put these things on the road and get across the country. In 2010, the Motorcycle Cannonball was started by our friend Lonnie Isom Jr. Lonnie's goal was to gather a group of early motorcycle enthusiasts to put their primitive machines to the test in a coast-to-coast -coast endurance run. But rather than make it a speed run, Lonnie set it up as a rally competition where riders would follow a prescribed course and gain points for mileage completed and accuracy of arrival. For 2023, promoter Jason Sims laid out a grueling 16-day course to challenge not just the machines, but the riders themselves. To do an event like this, it takes us two years of planning. Uh, even when we were here the last time, I was already pre-planning exactly what we were doing the next time. So I'm out scouting the cities, we're doing the roads. Uh, we actually take these roads four to five times before we even put riders on them. You know, mapping it, making sure everything is correct from, you know, a thousandth of a mile, making sure the building's there, the landmarks, just to make sure that they can make it from point A to point B. Every cannonball, the route is completely different different and riders don't know their route until they get their route sheets in the morning. In 2010, my dad actually competed in the first motorcycle cannonball run from Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to Santa Monica, California on his 1915 Harley. Now we don't officially have any riders from Wheels Through Time in this year's run, so this year, Gary's our guy. Okay guys, it looks like two of the earlier bikes are getting ready to head. Dave's got his helmet strapped on over there. 1911 Harley back on the road. The steepest grades of the whole cannonball are coming up next. Yeah. Too cool. Two earliest bikes on the cannonball, guys. They don't get much better. There's Todd rolling out on the nine, Dave on the 11. Take care, Dave. Wow, you gotta be tough. I'm telling you, to do something like that, jump on a 1911, a 1909, go cross country, these guys are groundbreakers. an Indian scout. That thing was sounding perfect. <laughs> 13 Harley just rolled out. They got to stay for 30 minutes. So she just came in a few minutes ago. They got a long second half of the day here. So she's itching to get out, but you got to stay for 30 minutes. So wait in two minutes, one minute, and off she goes. So wish her luck. At this point, I'm getting a little worried because bike after bike after bike are pulling out and heading on to the next leg and still no Gary. Nobody knows where he is and we haven't heard from him for hours. There he is, Gary's coming, all right. <laughs> Good deal, man, what's up, Gary? <laughs> Could be better. You made it. Yes. We were worried about you. Well, dude. you're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the clutch is, I'm having clutch trouble. Ever since Gary got the bike back together, the clutch has been the weak link. He was lucky to even make it up the hill today. If we don't lend him a hand, there's no way he's going to make the rest of the day or the next 3,000 miles. Let's just put him a new, uh, a new throwout rod in there. Honestly, I have no idea how he made the 160 mile first leg into wheels through time. Part of the problem, well, first off, I couldn't shift. That was the first, that was the big problem. I just couldn't shift. Okay, yeah. and I, it got worse and worse and worse, and I just pulled in. What the hell is that? Oh no, that's the nut came off his clutch. Nah, it's, this whole thing's gotta come off. The clutch was literally about to fall off. The only thing holding it on was the primary cover. Yeah, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, everything is going really well. I love the show. <laughs> <laughs> a Harley JD clutch is held on with one little nut. And if that nut's not installed properly and torqued to spec, it's gonna fall off. And that spells disaster. 
It's a miracle he's even running. Let me get, uh, whoo, that stuck is hot. So after everything cooled down, we were able to get the clutch reinstalled, tightened down, and properly adjusted. Gary, I hope this is the end of your clutch woes. Let's crank it up okay. real quick. Okay. That felt better. Yeah, way better. Disaster averted. On the fly fixes like this always get your blood pumping and keep your adrenaline high. So after getting the bike back in shape, I decided to head down the road and make sure Gary's running right. I pulled out my dad's 1915 Harley to lead him out of town. I'm so happy to see him back on the road. But the question is, can he make it the next 3,000 miles?